Hey y'all, Instinct Survival is coming again with another Two Tip Tuesday. This time we'll be talking about layering and hanking. Yeah, hanking. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about layering first. And the main reason is because it's cold outside and uh, I'm actually burning up. So uh, we're looking at uh, right at 40 degrees right now. Uh, earlier this morning, it was about 32. So for Georgia, a little cold. Anyway, it's February, getting ready for ice storms. Layering. Your mother always told you, hey, don't forget to layer, right? Always keep your jacket on. The same old story, same old song and dance that we've always heard. And the benefit of that is, don't tell her I said so, mom was right. <laughs> yeah, mom was right. The reason you want to do layering is because it gives you the ability to come in and take off when you get hot, put on when you get cold without the, oh my gosh, I'm pulling one thing off and I'm freezing to death, or putting one thing on and I'm now swe sweating to death. The benefit of that comes down to when you look at, oh, I'm being active, I need to pull off one thing because even Les Stroud says, hey, you sweat, you die. It's real simple. And the bull, what it boils down to is when you start looking at hypothermia and hyperthermia, if you get too hot, too cold, it can lead to big, big problems out in the wilderness. And so when you look at the benefit of that is you start dealing with, okay, if I layer and I get hot, I can use and interchange those different layers. Now, right now I'm pretty layered up, which is why I said, let's do this first because it's pretty hot. So let's look at just some of the layering of what we may do in 32 degree weather. Now, keep in mind, I'll tell you what I don't do with what we have, what I have on, and I won't take it down to bare skin. So I'll save you all that. Um, or my embarrassment, I, I don't know which it is. So first things first, right, is a shemag or a scarf. And in looking at that, why would I pull that or why would I use that is because I wanna make sure the wind is off my neck, right? However, I can do that with a short sleeve shirt, I can do it with a long sleeve shirt, whether I'm wearing a jacket or not. And again, it doubles as multiple other things. And we'll go into some of the purposes of a shemag at a different time. Uh, you look at my cotton, uh, Two Tip Tuesday, the one that has cotton in it, um, that'll give you some benefits and explanation of what you would use that for. So, uh, benefit of a shemag. So, first, the shemag or scarf, my jacket. Yeah, no music playing in the background, please. My vest, this is a goose down vest. Uh, my dad bought me this years and years and years ago. Gander Mountain still fits because it was nice and, and big then. Uh, got a hole in the front. I don't know what happened, but something pierced all the way through it. Backside's got duct tape. I haven't put anything on the front side yet, but goose down. I've got another one with synthetic fibers on the inside. So there's that one. So, so far we're looking at, at a couple of different layers. Then on top of that, my thermal shirt. The benefit of using a thermal shirt is it keeps the hot pockets, if you will, the little, uh, while you've got the, the airflow in there, it keeps the pockets of hotness in, I didn't realize I had my sunglasses on. Um, uh, it, it warms it up, right? So it keeps the air warm in there. And now you've got an extra layer of warm air inside the shirt or on the shirt on the layer itself, both on the outside and being covered and the inside where it's running into the other shirt. Yeah, other shirt. Here we go. <clears throat> Another long sleeve shirt. This one's also cotton. And I'll go ahead, um, well, it's cold. So um, this would be the next one. And then I have my base layer or my, uh, this one's actually a short sleeve shirt. Now, a lot of people go, well, wait a minute, Bill. If you just use merino wool and if you just do base layers and if you buy this piece of equipment, guys, I don't have that kind of funds. I'm not asking for any, I'm just giving you what uh, the budget-minded person would have or the common man would have uh, using Dave Canterbury's words. I have a, a uh, layered shirt, a short sleeve shirt, a cotton shirt, a thermal shirt, my uh, vest, my jacket, and my scarf. Now, what would I not use? This morning I was out, again, 32 degrees, I was outside doing some work. I had on my base layer, my short sleeve shirt, and this thermal shirt, and um, my vest was around, but I had pulled it off because I was starting to get a little warm. So uh, I actually put off a lot of heat. That's just the way it goes. So I don't use a whole lot, but enough to go, hey, if I'm cold, I can put something else on, or if I'm hot, I can pull something off. And that's the benefit of that is it, okay, now I can go in and put the shemag on and not have to worry about another shirt. Or I could pull this one off, put the thermal one on, put the shemag on, I'm warm. 
or the list goes on. I can mix and match and mingle, if you will. And everything kind of folds up and puts down into the pack or puts into the pockets of what you already have. Now that jacket actually has some inside pockets that are huge and I can shove my shirts, my chamog down in them without having to worry about it. So that in itself is layering. Again, the benefit is um, to prevent hyperthermia and hypothermia, right? That's, that's the whole thing of, of layering. Now let's talk about hanking. Hanking for some of you, may, some of you may go in, Bill, that's old news. That's okay. Same with layering. It's old news and that's okay. But what we look at is these small uh, little bundles of cordage that we've got laying around. And I've got in the bottom of my cook kit, I, you saw me pull out a spaghetti string or a spaghetti uh, wad of them the other day. Um, I, you pull them out and they're everywhere. They start knotting up and everything. And one way to prevent that is doing what's called hanking. Now, I've hanked some jute twine. I've hanked my bank court bank line because this is what it did look like, right? This is, uh, you know, kind of what's left over. Oh, I had a piece left over. Let me go in and do that. Couple of different things in this. What it does do is, and we'll use the bank line as an example. I don't have to worry about it coming undone, right? Because it, it's nice and tight and taut, if you will. And I can take this and go, oh, well, that's, you know, seven foot based off of the number of loops or based off of some other thing. I've measured it out and I've wrapped it up. I know it's about this amount. I can use those over and over and over again. The other way, and this is why I have my tarp here, is because on my uh, normal tarp, I actually still have the, the knots on there, or, or the, the cordage on there. And then what I do is I take them and then I hank them up. And <laughs> dog wants to go inside. So hanking, let's go through this. I'll hank them up, uh, uh, up to the grommet, right? So hanking is real easy, right? Go down. Around and all you're doing is a figure eight. All right, you're seeing this in slow motion, but it doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long to get this done. And so, when we look at doing that, when we get closer to the end, then what I do is I just take this and I tuck it under, and then I pull that loop back up, and then I tighten it up. Okay, and I do that a couple of times, right? All I'm doing is just taking and basically wrapping that cord around it each time putting in another um, hitch to it. And in essence, it's really just a clove hitch that I'm putting on there. So I can tighten that up and then it stays on my tarp. Now, why is that beneficial? Because now I know when I grab this tarp, I have on the main four corners, I've got anywhere between 20 and uh, one of these is 100 foot. So uh, yeah, I had it strung out <laughs> across, the, across the backyard. So that's why we have that, that's why we do it. Hopefully this is not the 100, 100 uh, foot one, 100 yard one, if you will, 100 foot one. Uh, we're gonna do it in a, at a different angle. So I come in, around, around, and I'm just figure eight between the two, right? Now to do it normal, I'll take and get both hands going. I think this is the, not quite the longer one. It's about 50 foot on that one. And then we're just taking and doing the same thing. All I'm doing is pulling that last one up poking it back through, pulling it on through, and on around. Now, again, I'll do this several different times, around and around and around and around, and then just pull that piece back through. And the only thing that's for, you can leave a loop in it, makes it easier, tighten it up, and then when I'm ready to use it, I can just pull that, pull that tag in, and I'm good to go, right? So that's where we start on that. So that's it, guys. That's uh, that's uh, hanging cordage. Again, it's just a way to keep it out of the way, keep it um, nice and neat, if you will, and make it easier when you're trying to use it in a long-term situation, right? Oh, where's my cordage? It's right there. I don't have to worry about, let me go look through my pockets. Do I have another piece of cord? I mean, I mean I've seen some videos where they're out doing a solo. It's like, oh crap, I forgot cordage. Now what? So they have to go and make cordage. Or um, <laughs> poor Brooke Whipple. She's out, she's all set up and everything. She forgot her fire starter. So she packed it all back up and, and took it all back to the house. So um, if you haven't seen her videos, uh, Girl in the Woods, I think is what it is, is Brooke Whipple. So for those of you that's seen alone, uh, Brooke and Dave Whipple, that's her channel. Um, anyway, I'm gonna cut out because uh, I know that he's fixing to start going nuts. So anyway, guys, thanks. That's it for today, hanking and layering. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you understand it. I hope it was clear enough. Any questions, please feel free to, to, to comment uh, down below and let me know.
I want to make sure that you uh, that you understand it. And if you don't, if you got another tip, please let me know. I, I got one this past week. It's a good one. Um, not sure when I'm going to do it because I need to be. I really need to be somewhere to, to make that one happen. So anyway, thanks for all you do. Thanks for your likes, subscribes, comments, and everything else. Hey guys, use your instincts to survive. Thanks for watching.